Hi, everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about the MCAS 2018. We're going to get through, hopefully, the rest of session one and maybe even start session two. So let's get right to it. If you uh, haven't done this yet, the PDF of the 2018 MCAS is in the video description. All right, rectangle A, B, C, D. And by the way, this is a non-calculator, this section. A, B, C, D are similar to, is similar to rectangle E, F, G, H. So similar is important. The rectangles and some of their dimensions are shown below. Okay, so we have these two dimensions, we have these two dimensions. Solve for x. Okay, so what we're going to do is look to see what side matches up with EH. So EH is the first and last. So that means EH and AD correspond. So they didn't try to trick us here. They are oriented in the same way, but that's why we have to check the similarity statement right here. So we're going to put AD over EH. And then we have, it looks like, B, sorry, DC, so these two, that should match up with GH, which is right here, okay? So because I had this on the top over here, I'm going to have this over top over here as well. The left uh, figure will be on the top of both ratios. It's important to be consistent. DC over HG. Okay, let's just plug these in. So AD is 5, uh, EH is X, and DC is 10. And HG is 12. Okay, so we have our proportions set up. Now let's cross, multiply, and solve. So X times 10 is 10X. Uh, 5 times 12 is 60. Divide both sides by our coefficient, which in this case is 10. And X would be equal to 6 inches, it looks like. Yep, inches. Okay. Let's look at number 819. The equation below has two. Let me see if I can get that to be better focused here. Okay. The equation below has two solutions. Uh, the absolute value of n plus 4 is equal to 1. One solution is negative 3. What's the other solution to the equation? So <clears throat> there's two ways to solve this. You can mental math this and say, okay, well, we're looking for two numbers that have a difference of 1. So negative 3 and 4 have a difference of 1, and then... Uh, negative 5 and 4 have a difference of 1, but we can solve it also the other way. So n plus 4 is 1. I'm going to split this and rewrite it. So n plus 4 equals 1, and then n plus 4, and we're going to change this to negative 1 and solve each one. So subtract 4 from both sides. And we get n equals negative 3, which we already have that one. And for this one, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides and n is equal to negative 5, which is the answer we need. Okay, again, we're just looking for two numbers that have a difference of 1. So negative 3 and 4 have a difference of 1, and then negative 5 and 4 have a difference of 1. Okay. All right, I have some scrap paper, which we'll probably use for this one. How much time do we have? All right, oh, I got time. I should be able to finish this. Let me zoom out a little bit here. All right, Lionel wrote an arithmetic sequence. The first five terms of the sequence are shown below. 3, 10, 17, 24, 31. What is the next term in Lionel's sequence? So, okay, so part A, uh, I'm going to go ahead and write the terms here. So we have 3, 10, 17, 24, 31, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so what's the common difference here? We just take one term and subtract the previous term. So 10 minus 3 is 7. So the common difference is going to be 7 here, okay? That means we're changing by 7. We're going up by 7 each time. So the next term in the sequence would just be 31 plus 7, which is 38. So 38 is our answer for that one. I'll show you work. You just have 31 plus 7. All right, part B. <clears throat> that was not that bad. Write an expression that can be used to find the nth term of Lionel's sequence. Okay, so... Uh, all right, so we start with the term 1, so a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So that's the arithmetic sequence formula right here. So this is our first term, which in this case is 3, plus n is the desired term, which we're going to leave in terms of n minus 1, and then d is the common difference, which in this case is 7. Oops, why did I forget the 1? Oh, let's go ahead and distribute the 7. So 3 plus 
you'll usually see the D written here. I started writing it here because I've seen people combine the A sub 1 and the D before because they screw up their order of operations. This kind of avoids that from happening, but feel free to put the D here as long as you don't go out of order there. Okay. <clears throat> uh, 7 times n is 7n, and 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. Let's combine like terms here. So 7n and 3 minus 7 is negative 4. That's it. Okay, part C. Bella also wrote an arithmetic sequence. Each term in Bella's sequence is equal to 3 times the corresponding term of Lionel's sequence. Okay, so it's 3 times all these. So let's start Lionel's first. So 3, 10, 17, 24, 31. Okay, so hers is going to be 3 times that. So write an expression that can be used to find the nth term. Okay, so let's go ahead and just write her sequence. So this is Lionel's. And this is going to be Bella's. So Bella's going to have 3 times this, so 9, 30, uh, let's see, 3 times 17, okay, 2, 51, this is 70, 72, 24 times 3, so, yep, we're going up by 21, 93, Okay, so, all right, we, we have enough to do this, actually. So, a sub, all right, so we're doing the nth term. So, again, we'll write the sequence here, or the formula, rather. So, a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Uh, we're going to do m, actually. They want us to use the mth term. So, a sub 1 is 9, and the m is m minus 1, and our d is going to be 21. That's our common difference. Okay. So, we're going to distribute that. So n plus 21m minus 21, and then combine uh, these like terms, so 9 and negative 21. Is it 12? Yeah, it's 12. So 21m minus 12, because it's not a larger number. And that's it. Okay. Let's look at D. What is Oh. <coughs> What is the 20th term in Bella's sequence? Sure, explain. All right, so we're going to use the sequence and find the 20th term. So we're just going to plug in 20 for m. So 21 times 20 minus 12. So 21 times 20, let's see, 21 times 20. Well, let's multiply by 2 and add a 0 to it. So 42, add a 0 to it, minus 12, 408. And that would be the 20th term. And that's it. That wasn't too bad. I think we have one more. This one is the last one for this session, so we'll finish off here. That'll be the end of this video. All right, so a little bit here. A company charge packages fruit baskets of different weights and ships them to customers. The company charges a flat fee for packaging the baskets, the total packaging and shipping cost in dollars Y for a fruit of a fruit basket weighing X pounds is represented by the line on the graph below. Okay, so here's the weight. And here is the uh, cost. Okay, so obviously there's a correlation here. What is the y-intercept of the line on the graph? So y-intercept. Uh, where's across the y-axis? Right here. So we'd say 0, 4. Okay. What does the y-intercept of the line represent? Well, y-intercept y is our starting value. So our starting value at zero weight, it still costs us 4 bucks. Why? Because that would be the, the that flat fee that was mentioned earlier. So this represents the flat fee, which is four bucks. Okay, so you just that's what you're starting with. What is the slope of the line on the graph? So you can calculate the slope by finding the, the rate of change here. So we're going to start at our y-intercept. We're going to take the vertical change over the horizontal change. We're going too far. So change in y is going to be, let's see, we went up from 4 to 10, so went up 6, and went over 3. So rate of change would be 2, yep, $2 per pound. So 2 is the rate of change. What does the slope represent? Um, it represents the shipping cost. as 
the weight increases. And write an equation that best represents the line of the graph. All right, so y equals mx plus b. So y equals our rate of change is m, so it's 2x. And our b is our y-intercept, which in this case is 4. So 2x plus 4. All right. So this is the equation you wrote in part E to determine the weight in pounds of the heaviest fruit basket that could be packaged and shipped for 50 bucks. All right, so the cost is $50. So y equals 2x plus 4. So cost is y, so $50. So we're going to solve for x here. We can do that. Subtract 4, get rid of our constant. So $46 equals 2x. Divide by 2, that's our coefficient. So it would be 23 pounds. And that's the heaviest you could. Oh, that's the heaviest uh, object you could ship for 50 bucks. And I think that's it for session one. Let's see. Session one, yep. So we'll start session two in the next video. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for watching, guys.